Leonard T. Chapman was born and raised in Southern California, influenced by Hollywood movies and wartime newsreels, as well as his own family's involvement in the motion picture industry. It was certain for Leonard to work in the same company that his family started. I was a student at UCLA, and uh, my dad was Ralph Chapman, and uh, he was in the film business. And uh, he said, well, why don't you come with me? I'm going to an interesting set. And I said, uh, sure. And it was at MGM Studios, and it was uh, the remake of Mutiny on the Bounty, a movie starring Marlon Brando. And uh, I saw a huge ship, and I was told they actually took the plans from the original bounty, made a full-scale, minus 10 feet, replica of the bounty, and there it was. And on the bow of the bounty stood Marlon Brando with his hand in his lapel, and the ship was built on a giant rocker system, and it was rocking back and forth. I said, wow, this is a great industry. I'd love to be part of this. Uh, so uh, I think that's what started it all. It was Frank Cherkinian, known as the father of televised golf, who wanted to put movement into the sport of golf. The Titan Crane and Sidewinder were the perfect tools for Cherkinian to get both mobility and height into televising golf. Brooks Graham and John Frankenheimer used to work in the stages and they did Playhouse 90s. And I think you brought in one of the first cranes to be used on a Playhouse 90. That's right, that's right. And I think that that was kind of a segue for, that, for, that, for Brooks to actually, when he went into field operations, to bring it out into the field because uh, after all, we work on sound stages in a studio, whether it be motion picture or television, and when you're working a golf tournament, you don't make a noise. And the beauty of, of all of your uh, inventions, they don't make noise. So it's just, uh, you know, a fluidity of, of the, the, the boom coming up and down. So I think that's why it fits so perfectly in golf, because it was quiet, less obtrusive, and, uh, and got that height that uh, was always required. Chapman Leonard's equipment was changing the broadcast look of televised sports. And in the early 1980s, just before the Olympic Games were to come to Los Angeles, a request came that Leonard design a new piece of equipment that would be rigid, fast, and light to record action up and down the football sidelines, yet could transport easily from one event to another. Thus, the Olympian was created. It was a thrill to have that piece of, of equipment there, you know, and it was flexible enough that it could be moved uh, when the finish lines changed, depending upon the race that they were conducting, uh, not to mention the height. So you had all this flexibility, and, and, and just maybe a year or two before that, we were using Chevy Love trucks for football <laughs> on that same track. And, you know, we thought, okay, we can manage setting up a tripod on the back of a truck. But, uh, you know, when the, when the Chapmans came in uh, for an operator, it was like heaven. When it first came out, we were actually, you know, doing uh, a move as yeah. we traveled along the sideline with the players in the foreground. You know, we'd start with them. We might start on player being, uh, that was injured, being worked on. And then we'd start dolling up and go right over their heads, right over the existing players' heads and right out to the field. Yeah, see, these, these were yeah. thrilling things because this was production quality uh, for a remote, for a field sports. You'd never do those things no. with the marketeer or the... Or the yeah. No, but so you, I think that was what was thrilling about me because I kind of crossed over back and forth. And uh, to get that kind of production shot uh, at a sporting venue was kind of exciting. Days, you know, we were on the market. You were on a marketeer, or I was on a golf cart, or something like that. And you know, it's wobbling back and forth. It doesn't really have a suspension system. It's got, you know, the the shocks on everything. But but when you walk back and forth, you never had the stability that you have with that piece of equipment because I could walk from side to side on on that platform and hold the shot. It wasn't like moving all over the place. And especially now, you got a 600 millimeter, a thousand millimeter lens that you're you know you're shooting guys' eyeballs across the across the field. You have to have something that's extremely stable. And now we have a platform that we can do that. With the recently built Arthur Ashe Stadium, located in Flushing Meadows, New York, came need for new equipment to cover this escalating event. Leonard, excited to start on this project, where the need was for a compact but mobile pedestal to locate in and around the stadium to get all the coverage needed. The Pedali and Lenson pedestal were created. These units were compact with a longer vertical travel. Operator seating capability to move with the units along with a removable center column to get in tight areas, 
yet allowing media and players to move around without cumbersome camera support units blocking spectator views. The pedestals were a success and are used today to capture this exciting two-week event. Well, a little kid, I built, uh, used to play with Tinker Toys. You remember those, right? Yes, yes. Little, little log cabin things and everything. Sure. Great different things. Yeah. Well, it's just extending it all the way through life. I always said the hardest part of creating something is to first define clearly the problem. Once you clearly define the problem, the solutions will come. You can usually find a solution. Known for his professional equipment as well as focus on customer service, with over 55 years in business and a marriage to the same lovely lady for close to the same amount of years, Leonard T. Chapman, to sum it up, is today an innovator, engineer, and most importantly, a family man. So uh, anyway, uh, no, it's been a great ride, uh, and a lot of fun, and hope we can continue doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Leonard Chapman. This is incredible. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm uh, in, an engineer, and I uh, spend most of my time uh, working in an office with fellow engineers and so many other people. But one day I was walking down the street, and I received a call from Ken Agart while on a morning walk. And Ken told me that uh, I was to receive this Sports Broadcasting Hall of Fame award. I felt so honored that I was momentarily speechless. Ken quickly followed with an explanation of how the voting takes place. This phone call was several months ago and I still feel the same excitement today. My heartfelt thanks to all of you for this great honor. Reflecting on what led to this moment, I've concluded that it must be shared with many other people, like I heard tonight, so, so many of you were talking about teamwork. Well, it's also true with me. And my number one team member is the love of my life, my beautiful wife, Cindy. After, yeah, it's true. Uh, without her, I wouldn't be here tonight. She's been incredible. She does everything for me, and most of all, she gives me the love that uh, I've always sought. When I was a little kid, I grew up uh, watching movies. I loved the movies. And uh, I spend uh, a lot of time watching the Andy Hardy movies and saw family and saw how important family was. And you know what I see here tonight is all of you together here, I get the feeling that it's just one big family. And you all love each other in your own way. And it's terrific, it's an inspiration to see. I must also give thanks to my associates, past and present. Uh, I have to name a few of them, because they'll probably see a tape of this. <laughs> and if I don't, the, the, I won't hear the end of it. So there's uh, Harry. Harry is actually my uncle. And uh, Al, Irvin, Louie, and most certainly my dad, Ralph Chapman. My dad was my mentor who gave me the opportunity to explore this industry. But I have to say one more thing about my dad. He was also uh, a genius. When he was uh, 12 years old, he grew up the, on the ranches in Fresno, and he used to service the tractors as a 12-year-old kid. And uh, so he was gifted with a lot of innate ability. And, uh, you know, he was in the film business, and. Uh, he was also involved in creating better ways to film or video record movies. What I call the second generation at our company includes many, and to name them all would definitely take too much time. But there are a few I have to name. There's Vahe Mazian, Zarab, 
Malcolm, Brad, Greg Hill, and Greg Martin, Sam, and then Del the Delbasios. Some of you may remember Willie Delbasio coming out to the CBS Golf Classics and Firestone Country Club events. And uh, Willie was a great guy, always bringing gifts to everybody. And his brother, Eddie, and uh, Freddie also worked with our company. And there's Jason Sutton, Bob, Stas, Hassan, Shafi, Oscar Calderon, Oscar Segovia, Frank Laquena, Howard Kaufman, and of course, my family, which includes Chuck, Christine, Michael, Carol, Jennifer, Lenny, Nikki, Sabrina. And they're over there at the table there, and I love them all. But I would also like to thank my secretary, Susan, for her dedication and help. She's a, a, a young woman that uh, really brings passion to the job. She's helped us tremendously. A little more about myself can best be described by a comment my grandson, Chucky, made. Grandpa, the shop is your hobby shop. Well, what he meant, and I knew it, was that he knew I truly enjoyed my work. But it wasn't just for the building of new products. It was also the interaction with all our employees. The average tenure at our company is nearly 20 years. They've all become my extended family. Our company's success has been largely dependent on our interaction with our customers. I can recall many years ago a car ride with my dad, Ralph, Brooks Graham, and Pat Summerall. I don't know if they, they probably wouldn't remember. But uh, we were on our way to Brentwood, and uh, I met Francie Kinney in there. And in the excitement of this event, uh, I knew I wanted to be a part, of, a part of sports somehow. When I was a kid, I grew up loving sports. I wanted to be a football player. But I had a diving accident and broke my neck, and uh, that was the end of my football career. But uh, later I had the opportunity to become involved in, in a different way, in, in some ways maybe even a more satisfying way for me. Frank's powerful directing uh, of the event was very influential to me. The excitement of the golfers, and I, I think our interaction started it all. I was on my way to uh, wanting to make football vehicles or football uh, support systems for broadcasting. And when I got a call one day from uh, Brooks Graham about, hey, we need a, a vehicle to cover football on the sidelines. and uh, and also for golf events, I decided to uh, build a football vehicle. But it was only because of the interaction with many of you out here and others that I decided to uh, go on with it. And uh, uh, it's uh, been helpful, I hope. And it, I think I wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't. So uh, I remember a call from Brooks. And I also had a call from uh, others in the industry. And this football vehicle uh, definitely uh, found use on the 1984 Olympics. And I uh, have to say that uh, th these Olympic Games were especially exciting for me to see the vehicles operating uh, in those events at many different sites. And also at subsequent Olympic Games. We named the unit appropriately the Olympian and it was featured in the February 1988 issue of Popular Mechanics. In ensuing years, again, through interaction with end users, we continue to perfect our products. Our company also developed specialized pedestals for other sporting events, including the US Open, uh, golf, football, basketball, figure skating, and other sports. More recently, we responded to requests to handle 3D cameras on an extended mount currently being used on Monday Night Football. And soon we will add a gyro-stabilized mount to this device to produce an even steadier system, as well to add stability for movement while using a long lens. I'd like to thank John McRae of CBS Sports for his input and passes to special events. I would also like to thank John Dianakos from ESPN Colleges, as well as ESPN's NFL's Eddie Okuno and Joseph Caracone, also Fox Sports Productions, Mike Davies, and others. 
Finally, I would like to thank the many talented people in our industry for the hours of wonderful Televite coverage for all the world to enjoy. And that includes myself and my family. And finally, I was, must once again say thanks for this great honor. I will remember this moment for the rest of my life. Thanks again.